So here this was coming easy, simple. Just, I was enjoying, I wasn't hungry ever at all. I ate until my heart's content, so to speak, until I started learning how to break some of the emotional patterns that had been there. And life was just amazing. So I had the weight change, yeah, but I remember seeing friends I hadn't seen in years, and they were like, Phil, yeah, you know, you've lost the weight, but not that. We're not even talking about that. You're a totally different person. I mean, I would never be able to talk to you a couple of years ago in front of people or just feeling so unworthy. And, and you know, many people have heard that expression. It says, the external is a direct reflection of the internal. So what we have going on inside is what shows up on the outside. And so I had to think back to where this emotional turmoil really started. And, you know, I think maybe at the age of five, you know, when my parents separated, there was something there. I felt like I didn't have control. I wasn't explaining the situation. So here I was in a space that I wanted control of something. And my control was going to be food. And I was going to, I was going to eat whatever I want, whenever I want. And I started building these patterns and these triggers and different things. And, and I started to figure out, how am I going to break these things? How am I going to break these patterns? Because what I started to notice was that the raw food diet, the main thing about it is it really starts to bring up your emotions. And so what happens is, is okay, so here you have these emotions, right? People, people in the regular standard American diet world, they eat for everything. I mean, when there's a celebration, let's eat. When there's something sad, well, let's bring out ice cream and chocolates, let's eat. When there's, when there's a victory, let's eat. Everything's based around foods, family celebrations, eat. Everything's food, right? So when I had these emotions flare up before, say I had a hard time in life or something was going on, I would eat food way back down again. Things would go cool for a while, emotions would come up, I'd eat heavy food, go out buy burgers, you know, life sucks, da 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 I'm gonna eat this, and way back down again. Now here I am in this raw food paradigm. The food's very light, it doesn't weigh things down like burgers do. Salads don't do such a good job of oppressing your emotion. <laughs> so I have all this come up again, and then I had this realization one day. I have two choices. I can either go back to eating cooked and weighing it back down and playing this floppy game, which people do. They're like raw for a week, and then they're cooked, and then they're raw, and then they're cooked, and then they're raw. And there's no judgment. If that's, where, if that's what's going on, that's what's going on in that moment. Or I could look at this emotional pattern and this eating pattern that I developed my entire life and I could work on it and release all that emotion once and for all. So through this experience and of course the fact that you're also switching foods, so no longer eating foods with pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, larvicides, chemical sprays, poisons, dyes, you're eating this type of food. Imagine a lifetime for me, maybe some of the um, people that are older than me have had uh, more of a history of eating pure food because you know they really didn't have all that stuff as much back then. But for me, eating processed food my entire life, being constantly uh, attacked with those poisons, and all of a sudden having those eliminated from my system, eating simple, pure foods, organic, your mind starts thinking clear. You start having more genuine interaction with people. I could, I could actually have a conversation with somebody without looking away. I mean, before I would have a conversation with a guy standing here and I'd be looking here the entire time because I just had no self-worth and I didn't even want to look him in the eye. And now that's like one of my greatest things I could do is just to be present with somebody and to have real, genuine communication with them and really like feel the intent that's behind that. So like, so I started having, you know, of, started having changes in that, I started having changes in my religious beliefs. I started having changes in my relationships and how I interacted with people on an overall basis. Business started changing. How I interacted in, in a work environment, more confident, more just, just really focused and was able to think clear, multitask like never before. And of course, the big thing about raw food is a lot of people uh, talk about the amount of energy you get. The sluggishness feels falls off you. Some people are like jump kicking out of bed, and like before they'd be like two hands pushing themselves up, couldn't do anything. And like all of a sudden, I mean, I've had people come to me like 50, 60, 70 years old, and they're like, I don't ever remember feeling like this. Not when I was 25. Not even when I got out of the army, I don't remember feeling like this. Sure, my body might have been fifth, but at that time, there was always just this heaviness, this heaviness that was on us from 
rarely what we eat, and of course we've all heard that expression, you are what you eat, right? So eating those types of things and switching to this light fare brought up emotion for me, and it brought up a lot. And, and I think that's where people really struggle with this lifestyle, because that emotion comes up and they don't know how to deal with it, and that causes some struggle, that causes conflict. And I remember having a trigger come up one time. I was at a family event, and you know, my family's old school, so all the pasta's handmade, everything's great. My uncle's got wine cellar in his basement, the whole thing, you know? And I remember going in, and the, just the, the smell attacked me. There's this giant table, and there's about 50 of us there, and I was just like, wow, I want some pasta. And I had been 100% raw, so like since the day I switched, I still haven't gone off. And, and so I was just like, how am I going to get past this? And I had brought my own salad with me and, and that whole thing, and I was all proud of my salad. And, um, and so I said, you know what? I'm going to sit down in this chair, and I'm not going to move until I figure out what's going on. Because I am tired of letting this stuff trick me and rule me over and over, repeating the same patterns. And so I sat down in the chair, and I said, okay, I know that pasta, there's nothing in there that's really good for me. It's just leached, garbage, blah, blah, blah. Just giving myself a little bit of a mental talk. And I said, okay, so what's behind that? Why do I want that? My mind knows that that's not my best choice. What's behind that? And all of a sudden it came to me. That meal for my entire life represented family. That meal represented, in my mind, love. So like when I saw that, it triggered this in the back of my mind that says, oh, that's what family feels like. You have to eat that. Then you're going to feel included. Everybody's going to be there. We're all going to laugh. We're going to do our jokes. We're going to do our thing. And, and that's how it's always been. And so I had to come to the point where I had to break the trigger and I had to remove the feeling from the actual action. And I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Me eating bleached flour has nothing to do with family and has nothing to do with love. What's, how can I reassociate that? Okay, I can actually just have genuine interaction with my family. I can be fully present, and I'll be a lot more present by eating something light in a salad and keeping me alert and energetic than I would be eating pasta, which is going to weigh me down, and in five minutes I'm usually laying on the couch anyway. You know, So I, I can break that association and create something new. Now family, and now that feeling of family and love is just me interacting with my family, me asking them about their life, me asking them questions, me having good conversation, and the food has nothing to do with it. And then I started to see how many other times has that happened in my life, you know? How many other times have I celebrated a victory or the first time I felt something come up like some sort of emotional weight come up, maybe some sort of relationship or argument or some sort of business thing or whatever that just didn't exactly go the way I thought. How else can those associations and those triggers push me to eat? Because I still would notice even while raw, some of those things had a reaction. Now granted, the interesting thing about raw is when you switch, it, as long as you're not eating some fatty foods, but like when I was overeating, I was overeating lettuce. So I mean, I really wasn't putting on any weight but I still was recognizing the fact that, you know, I didn't need to have an extra salad that night or whatever I was doing. And although it wasn't really hurting me to an extent, I still wanted to sort of look into that and break those associations. So it was less about necessarily always following someone's guideline and, and going by somebody else's because that's giving away your power. That's saying, well, I can't figure it out. I can't do it. So you tell me what to do and I'll just listen to whatever you say. I mean, I get tons of emails from people just like, give me a diet program, tell me what to do every single day, tell me what to buy at a grocery store. And I've done that, and nine out of ten times that doesn't work. Because you have to want to do it. You have to be in the position where you're like, I'm ready to change my life. I'm ready for more. I'm ready to, I'm ready to embody all the happiness and joy and desire that I've always, that I've always wanted and bring it into my 3D world. And, and then it's just like, how can I do a lot of self-exploration to figure that out? So it was all about using intuition. And, and one of the, the coolest things that I like to think about when I always think of this is, you know, a long time ago, the shaman, if you had, if you had a horse, right, that was sick, they would bring the horse to the shaman for some healing, right? 